I'm Kay Minchu, and I'm Julia Dow. We're members of the History Committee of the Church. The family of First Baptist Church on the Square in LaGrange is blessed by knowing the history and traditions handed down from one generation to the next. The love of God, the Bible, Christian fellowship, and spiritual values are dear to us and have shaped our lives. In Psalm 78, 4, we read, We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, His power, and the wonders He has done. We are fortunate to have visible evidence of the history of our church here in the Heritage Room. First Baptist Church on the Square has a proud history. Our buildings are the most recognizable symbols of our church, but of course our real treasures are the people who make the activities in these buildings possible. Our church had its beginning on April 12, 1828, months before the city of LaGrange was chartered. Founders included 11 men and women, one of whom was a slave, identified as Nellie, the property of. They built a hewn log church, similar to this one, located at the northwest corner of Bull and Broom Streets in downtown LaGrange. In 1829, with a membership of 52, we accepted an invitation from churches in Coweta County and formed the Western Baptist Association. The first session was held at our church because it was the only building with adequate space. Our church is now a member of the Troop County Baptist Association. Subsequent early records refer to finishing the meeting house, meaning weatherboarding was added to the original structure and interior walls were plastered. During these years, baptisms were held in the Chattahoochee River or in nearby creeks and ponds. The LaGrange Presbyterians organized in March 1829. They shared our Bull Street building until they completed their own structure at the intersection of Church and Harrelson Streets in 1846. Philip Hunter Green, a Baptist who later built the Oaks on Vernon Road, and James Lloyd, for whom Lloyd Presbyterian Church is named, organized the first Sunday school in 1842. This was three years before the Southern Baptist Convention was founded. By the middle of the 19th century, the town was developing as the county seat and as a commercial center. The courthouse stood in the square. A committee was named to choose a new site for our church. They selected the tavern lot on the northwest corner of the square. Four ionic columns graced the front of the building and the sanctuary seated 400. Footstools were supplied in middle seats for the women. The 1856 cornerstone, which was removed when work began on our present building in 1996, contained documents which church members had carefully set aside for future generations. Changing weather from Georgia's hot, humid summers and cold winters left few identifiable remains other than a Bible. Miraculously, one daguerreotype survived and was restored. The pastor, Eldred Teague, the head of the building committee, Philip Green, and two unidentified men are now clearly visible. Joanna Baxter drew this sketch of the building on one of the old bricks. The building was topped by a steeple, which was destroyed in an 1878 windstorm. Soon after the building's completion, the church and the nation faced its worst crisis. The Civil War saw most LaGrange men and boys go off to war, some never to return. Young Paulman Farrell died of disease a year after entering the war. Several church women joined others in town in organizing the Nancy Hearts, a female militia unit. They defended our city on April 17, 1865, when Yankees marched through on their way to Macon. Several entered the campus of LaGrange Female College on the hill as they entered town. During the war, Confederates used their basement and other buildings in town as hospitals. We again shared our church with the Presbyterians. 
The money received from the Confederacy for rent was used to construct a baptistry. Soon after the war ended, several black members of our church asked to have a separate facility. There were 253 black members and 171 whites. The newly formed church used our basement until 1871 when we helped them construct their own building. Member Blunt Farrell, father of our young Civil War soldier, donated property for the church. The congregation continues as First Baptist Church on Fannin Street. Here, a group gathers outside the church in the 1950s. Town consisted of unpaved and often muddy streets, though two women's colleges provided a refining influence. During much of the 19th century, members of the church supported Southern Female College, a Baptist school located in town. Students from kindergarten to college age attended classes until it closed in 1919. One Southern female college graduate was Miss Viola Burks, who played the organ for First Baptist for many years. She also served as Troop County's first social worker and donated land for a children's camp near Mountville. Troop County youth continue to enjoy Camp Viola each summer. From its beginning, our church has been mission-minded, a fact attested to by the strong support of these programs. Formed in 1879 and reorganized three years later, Ayers was the first women's missionary union in the Western Association. Here, members gathered to recognize the 75th anniversary of WMU. Through the years, WMU has broadened activities of our church by meeting community needs through programs like soup kitchens and Meals on Wheels and providing a youth missions program and nurturing friendships through the formation of circles. Mission activities in the church include sponsoring mission trips around the U.S. and foreign countries as demonstrated by this group that went to Brazil in 1985. In a unique experience, the Reverend Dr. J. Thornton Williams exchanged pulpits, houses, cars, and lifestyles with Reverend Samuel Sayers of Bixley, England during the summer of 1979. From our congregation came pastors, missionaries, and others in related Christian services, many of whom were reared in our church or have been ordained here. One missionary couple was Mr. and Mrs. Elton Johnson, who spent 37 years in Brazil. Another was Dot Taylor Johnson, who served with her husband in Colombia, South America, and Mexico. In 1890, the church added electric lights with power supplied by LaGrange Mills. The mills sat where the Catholic Church is today and also supplied power for the city's first electric street lights. Several times in our history when renovations and additions were made, there were thoughts of relocating the church. Each time, the strategic location of the present site, with its sentimental and historical value, prevailed. In 1911, William Jennings Bryan, a former three-time presidential candidate, addressed the Baraka Sunday School class here. The LaGrange Reporter called this one of the largest gatherings in the history of LaGrange. We have long held the belief that Sunday School is the church at work in reaching out and teaching the ministry. Of course, the Bible is the center of the curriculum. Sunday School has been popular for children such as these in the 1950s, as well as adults in 1934. Activities for our members and community include vacation Bible school, study courses, prayer meetings, and revivals. The early 20th century saw a different look for downtown when a new courthouse was built only to burn 32 years later. The ceremony that marked the laying of the 1922 cornerstone was a 20th century highlight. Documents sealed in a copper box survived intact. At that time, an education building was added to meet Sunday school space needs. Six handsome columns replaced the four in the front. Stained glass windows were added, and Memorial Marble Baptistry <clears throat> was placed in the northwest corner of the sanctuary. 
A roof garden was added on top of the education building. The garden was sometimes used for evening worship in those pre-air conditioning days. An electric Skinner organ was purchased in 1922 with a new organ console added 50 years later. The organ was rebuilt during the 1997 renovation with a donation from Ely Calloway, Jr. We have always praised God through our music ministry. Old timers remember the choir loft on the west side of the sanctuary. Later it was centered behind the pulpit surrounded by a brass rail with a velvet skirt. Today with choirs, bell ringers, and an orchestra, our music ministry continues to be a vital part of our worship services and ministry. The Living Christmas Tree is a musical outreach to the community. The church continued to grow and in 1936 land was bought adjoining the back of the building. A new four-story structure merged with the 1922 addition. The main part of the first floor was designed to be a chapel and bride's parlor. The furnishings were given in memory of Ida Case and Calloway by her daughters-in-law. The chapel is used for everything from weddings to church gatherings to funerals. In 1941, our church was host to the Georgia Baptist Sunday School Convention. Delegations were housed in the homes of members and other residents of LaGrange. On Christmas Day 1955, church members worshipped in a beautiful new sanctuary after renovation and redecorating. Structural changes included a street-level entrance on Broad Street and a foyer. In 1963, the church bought the O'Neill Cleveland Building as the annex to provide more space for adult departments. After prayerfully seeking God's will, First Baptist has called 29 full-time pastors. Reverend James Davis was our first minister. One pastor had gone through the Revolutionary War, another joined the Confederate Army, while others served in later wars. Eleven became presidents of educational institutions, including Reverend John Dawson, who founded Southern Female. Another was given the first Doctor of Divinity degree by Mercer University. Samuel Pope Calloway published the local newspaper during the Reconstruction era. Dr. J. Thornton Williams served our congregation twice and served as president of the Georgia Baptist Convention. One minister was born in England. Our pastors, deacons, including these in 1972, and other leaders have had outstanding support from church and staff members offering strong support for the various ministries. The longest period of service by a Sunday school superintendent was given by T.S. Paul Hill with 35 years. When he retired, the church presented him a silver service. On his death, his widow Mary, a Methodist, presented the silver to our church as a gift. In 1970, a beautiful new steeple was lifted into place, a gift of Alice Hand Calloway. During the 1997 rebuilding, the steeple was removed, fitted with a set of carillons, and replaced atop the building. In 1972-73, our church experienced a year-long building renovation and modernization. Sunday school classes were held in the annex and in neighboring offices and lounges, including the Jewish synagogue and the lounge of Mansour's department store. A fellowship hall, a conference room, classrooms, and elevator were added during this building program. Later additions to church facilities include the Christian Family Life Center, built in 1988, and other buildings. Christian fellowship, often centering around meals, has long been a popular part of life at First Church of the Square. Here, members and friends celebrated the 150th birthday of the church in 1978. Through the years, church members have been involved in church community activities. From helping with disaster relief, to hosting the symphony, to providing changing rooms for a television movie, our church has been an active part of life of many facets of LaGrange. One activity which had the world's eye was the 1996 Olympics. More than 400 athletes trained in Troop County and our church welcomed the world with a community-wide prayer service. 
all of our buildings and memorials blend together to become both a part of history and of our life today. For instance, the beautiful stained glass windows added in 1922 in honor of church members such as Dr. Vaughn, the Casons, and Callaways continue to surround us at each worship service in our new sanctuary building. Constructed at a cost of $6.8 million and completed in 1998, the building resembles the former structure. Callaway Foundation Incorporated provided matching funds, so we were able to move into this building debt-free. This history provides an exciting basis on which to build our future.